the church in America is going to suffer so terribly. And we laugh now, but they will come after us. And they will come after our children. They will close the net around us while we are playing soccer mom and soccer dad. While we are arguing over so many little things and mesmerized by so many trinkets, the net even now is closing around you and your children and your grandchildren, and it does not cause you to fear. You will be isolated from society, as has already happened. Anyone who tries to run for office who actually believes the Bible will be considered a lunatic until finally we are silenced. We will be called things that we're not and persecuted not for being followers of Christ, but for being radical fundamentalists who do not know the true way of Christ, which of course is love and tolerance. You'll go down as the greatest bigots and haters of mankind in history. They've already come after your children, and for most of you, they got them. They got them through the public schools and indoctrination and the university and indoctrination. And then you wonder why your children come out not serving the Lord. It's because you fed them right into the devil's mouth. So little by little, the net is closing around. And then it's not little by little. Look how fast things are going downhill just in a matter of weeks. Matter of weeks. But at the same time, know this. Persecution is always meant for evil, but God always means it for good. And is it not better to suffer in this life to have an extra weight of glory in heaven? You must settle this in your mind. This is the one thing I want to say over and over. Do not believe. Down through history, you have a wrong idea of martyrdom and persecution. You think that these men were persecuted and martyred for their sincere faith in Jesus Christ. That was the real reason, but no one heard that publicly. They were martyred and they were persecuted as enemies of the state, as child molesters, as bigots. As narrow-minded, stupid people who had fallen for a ruse and can contribute nothing to society. Your suffering will not be noble. So your mind must be filled with the word of God when all people persecute you and turn on you. And if the spirit of God in common grace pulls back and you see even your children and your grandchildren tossing in the lot that you should die. This is no game. You want revival and awakening, but know this. For the most part, great awakenings have come only preceding great national catastrophes or the persecution of the church. I believe God is bringing a great awakening, but I believe that he is raising up young men who are strong in trust in the providence of God to be able to wade through the hell that's going to break loose on us. And it will be on us before we even recognize it. Unless, unless in God's providence, he is not done. He is not done. And note, this is, this is not silly talk. Apart from a great awakening, these things are going to come upon you. Be ready. <laughs> Get rid of sin in our life. 
is like a roaring lion. Dearly beloved, the Lord says, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, a stain from flesh and lust, which war against the soul. We have the ability to grieve and quench the spirit. In essence, let me put it in focus for you. We have the ability to halt the work of God in our life and to humiliate God. God forbid we ever do. Against the spiritual wickedness in high places. Seeking whom he may devour. How do we win? Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, against the methods of the devil. Some of us try to do it on our own righteousness, but our righteousness is as filthy rags. We're going into the battle defenseless against a formidable foe who seeks to devour us, who is the father of lies and the deceiver and the accuser. Wherefore, we must take upon ourselves the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand in the evil day. And having done all, Christian, we must stand. of the living God. I'm going to claim my Canaan. I'm claiming my Canaan because the Lord Jesus Christ is my commanding officer. The Holy Bible is my code of conduct. Faith, prayer, and the word are weapons of my warfare. I have been taught by the Holy Spirit. I have been trained by experience. I have been tried by adversity, and I have been tested by fire. I am a volunteer in this army, and I have enlisted for all of eternity. Let me tell you something. I will retire either in this army at the rapture, or I will die in this army, but I will not get out. I will not sell out, or I will not be talked out. I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to be capable, dependable by his might. And if my God needs me, I'm going to be there. I am a soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't have to be pampered, petted, primed up, picked up, pumped up, or pepped up, because I am a soldier. No one has to call me, remind me, invite me, visit me, entice me, or lure me. I am a soldier. I'm in my place saluting my king, obeying his orders, praising his name, and building his kingdom up. I am a soldier. No one has to send me flowers. No one has to send me gifts, cards, food, candy, or give me handouts. I don't need to be cuddled, cradled, cared for, or catered to. I am committed. I cannot have my feelings hurt enough to turn me around. I cannot be discouraged enough to turn me aside. I cannot lose enough to cause me to quit. And when Jesus called me into this army, I had nothing. And if I end with nothing, I will still come out even. Amen? Listen, but I'm going to win. My God's going to supply all my needs. I am more than a conqueror. I will always triumph in Christ Jesus because I can do all things through him. I am a soldier. Devils cannot defeat me. People cannot disillusion me. Weather cannot weary me. Sickness cannot stop me. Battles cannot beat me. Money cannot buy me. Governments cannot size me. And hell can't handle me. I am a child of the king. I'm claiming my Canaan. I am a soldier. Death cannot destroy me. For when my commanding officer calls me from this battlefield, he's going to promote me to a captain and bring me back to rule this world with him. I am a soldier in the army of my living God. I'm going to be marching and claiming victory. I will not give up. I will not turn around. I am a soldier pursuing my potential. I'm claiming my Canaan. Who will stand with me? Here I stand.